Hi friends, in Planet Earth Dating, it's Friday, August 4th, 2017. In both the Lynn Life and the Jamie Body Mind, the authorized souls remain only child souls from the deeper, denser dimensions and nature realms guardians. We are continuing our seven day assignment to reestablish search for truth space to clear out the effects of our street retreat. Someone's asking, what did we learn on our street retreat? I'm sorry, right now we still don't have enough clarity to know what we learned. We, we can tell that we ourselves lost our ability to function with any modicum of clarity and that that loss occurred really quickly. That's true. And that we have a long way to go to continue to recover from that. And, and what do I know? Uh, Somebody is asking, uh, they're, and they're referring to an analogy of some maybe 25 years ago when uh, the instruction came to us that we needed to stop drinking alcohol and it wasn't like we were real, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, this body mind wasn't a lash. Uh, no, that it, is true. But like to have a glass of wine or two when going out to dinner at a restaurant, and uh, that we had to give that up because for every glass of wine we assume, consumed, it would take two and a half to three days for the energy body to regain its state of clarity, and. So if we would go out on a Saturday night and have two glasses of wine with dinner, then that would blow the next week's clarity and we were not able to do this work effectively. That's true. And although it wasn't on our list of fun things to do, we gave up drinking alcohol. And what do we notice during this street retreat? Somebody's asking. We didn't notice anything during the street retreat other than that we couldn't tell anything, that we had just gotten completely fuzzy and, and couldn't tell anything. That's true. But as we are starting to recover from it, it does feel the same way as when the alcohol would wear off over the course of several days. That's true. So we're recovering from the uh, whine with an H of society. That's true. Well, that's a grumpy pants Very attitude. Very grumpy pants. And a whiny voice from above. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like, what do you it's mean ironic. whine? What do you mean whine? That is it. I hear it. The whiny voice. I hear it. Oh, boy. Live streaming up. What now? In order to reestablish search for truth space, let's stretch past that person. See how short we've gotten? We're still just unable to reach out of the very low, dense astrals where they're just packed with exploitative, whiny fakers who believe that their problems are the worst and they can't possibly turn around and help anybody else. And the truth is, uh, our collective decisions are have destroyed our biospheres That's in dimension true. after dimension and it's time for each of us to acknowledge that we have to change everything about the way we're living everything and stop thinking about ourselves and start to ask what now what does the greater good need right now what helps the greater good right now what more can I do right now to help the greater good and, and friends, if we're not doing things like tithing, then we're operating at the most basic selfish level. If we're not giving at least 10% of our income to worthy causes that are attempting to help the greater good, then we're as selfish as selfish can be. That's true. What are they saying? It's just... Babble, quiet mumble. Stretch longer, stretch longer, stretch through those. Live stream up. What now in order to reestablish? Search for truth space. What now? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Toothpaste tube, squeeze up this gunk that looks like bloody pus up out of the system. And somebody's asking again, what do we know? I know that bloody pus looks like an infection. That's true. 
uh, and they're giving the go on hand. And I also know that the first thing that we had to do in starting to clear out our energy body, and they want me to go faster, uh, is to, cl- but I can't, I'm sorry, I can't go faster, but my clarity is off. I can either go carefully or I can go quickly, but right now I'm not at my shiny best, so I'd rather be correct and slower than sloppy, quick, and wrong. There's that quieting again. That's true. They're asking again, what do I know? I know the first thing we needed to do was just cut all our channels off completely and squeeze the energy body and burn the black tarry stuff that was coming out that was just convoluted, tangled, twisted lies, packed, compacted lies, and burn it off like burning asphalt, basically. That's true. And and then this bloody pussy stuff started coming out of the energy body and what do I know it looks like an infection uh, caused by the lies that's true so this is the secondary effect of living in a society of lies what do you ask and also which way is up I really want to know please show me up I really want to know please show us up and I see fingers pointing every which way it's true Okay, zoom, 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 just go straight up the search for truth central axis. I do see somebody way up high, but even that person is trying to lead us off the search for truth central axis. That's true. This is like that one client who was trying to maintain a relationship with a loved one in less dense dimensions, and so many other dead presences, less dense presences, are just running interference, having fun at their expense. That's true. Trying to distract him from his actual assignment. And it's like what that YouTube viewer was talking about. Uh, basically, look, those people who call themselves angels are just gross people. How did he put it? The way he put it was that out-of-body presences have their own agenda and if Ground Zero host lives don't do what they want them to do to meet that agenda, the out-of-body presences get very hostile and are willing to destroy the lives. Well, and what's missing from that assessment, because uh, on the one hand that's actually true in many cases, But the underlying question needs to be, is the Ground Zero host life actively pursuing his or her own soul plan, his or her own sacred vows to spirit? Because while 99% of the voices from upstairs are just straight up exploitative voices with selfish intent, uh, there is that 1% who is actually trying to draw each of us into our soul plans, into fulfilling our sacred vows to spirit, into doing what we said we would do. And so the trick is to detangle the input from above, detangle that 99% which is exploitative and enabling and all kinds of other things that are not truly loving, That's true. and get to that which is truly loving and enabling is definitely not loving enabling hurts everybody extremely deeply that's true and true love what there somebody's asking what is true love as it's been explained to us for 27 years now true love is calling the beloved into his or her greatness into his or her destiny into his or her soul plan to call them into doing what it is they said they would do in their sacred vows with spirit. And somebody's asking, why is that? Uh, And they sound a little grumpy. Uh, Because when we die, uh, which is just a transitioning from more dense to less dense dimensions, we are actually held accountable for our sacred vows. And uh, and now there's a bunch of arguing. But the law of cause and effect is still real, and we can argue with it, but it doesn't make it go away. That's true. Arguing... (laughs) <laughs> that there is no God doesn't make God go away. Arguing there is no higher power doesn't make the higher powers go away. That's true. It just rendered it renders us ineffective in dealing with the realities. So listening to the very highest pitch voice coming in, 
the skinny kid, quote unquote, that highest vibration multiplied by the longest vertical reach gives us the presence we should listen to. Multiply the pitch of the vibration by the vertical reach of the energy body and you get a number and we should listen to the person with the highest number and this was channeled a long time ago by future Charlie and the future commander. Um, Boy, that was in the fall of 2014 maybe. And it's held up under scrutiny, pretty intense scrutiny. They're still arguing with this right now. I can hear all the arguing, but it's held up for almost three years now. Yeah, that's true. I think we can take it as our working theory that that's the voice we should listen to. And often it's a young person's voice. And somebody's asking, why is that? Well, look, after a week we felt hopeless and despairing about the possibility of living our soul plans. I think it's because our society is toxic, uh, at least for human society, but I think it goes far beyond just human society. That's true. And that people give up, and they have engaged, uh, when somebody's saying, go on, there's an engaging in a collective fantasy that there isn't going to be a day of accounting. That's true. For each of us, but that's just crazy. What now? In order to reestablish search for truth space, what now? Given the reality of these limited resources, what now? In order to manifest an actual divine plan for all dimensions, no matter what anyone else does or doesn't do, since that's what our soul contracts commit us to doing, and we will define the terms because it's all in the definition. An actual divine plan must be a plan. Now first, what is a plan? It is a series of steps to be taken in a proper order that will achieve the desired or assigned result. That's true. What is a divine plan? A plan that creates worlds that work for all sentiences. That's true. And what is an actual divine plan? A divine plan that's based on actual sentiences, no fantasy people, in the dimensions in which they're actually experiencing sentience. You can't count, quote, dead people, unquote, as if they're still, quote, alive. That That's crazy. That's a lie. It doesn't work. That's true. <sighs> So much arguing. That's true. With their actual intentions, and given that 99.9% of people seem to be so selfish they don't even tithe, I think we can say that we should just eliminate those presences from consideration. They aren't actually going to do anything to help the greater good. That's true. And look at the 0.1% who's willing to help the greater good. Anybody who's not tithing, I think we can eliminate them from consideration. They aren't going to do anything. Quit allocating resources to them. Don't waste it. There's not enough resource to go around. We've got a big divine plan to manifest. Give it to the people who are at least tithing. It's very quiet upstairs. Very quiet. We continue on the definition of an actual divine plan. It must also include actual awarenesses. If people aren't aware of what they're supposed to be doing, it's extremely unlikely they're going to do it. And somebody's asking, what do we know? And they're they're pointing to something we learned while teaching the classes. And somebody's asking, what was the instruction to teach the class about? We were attempting to teach people how to help others live their soul plans and in such a way live their own soul plans. And and what did we discover? It was a paradox when we did not tell people what their soul plan was. 100% of the time they did not do anything about their soul plan. That's true. And we tried it that way in the healing practice for maybe 15 years. We gave it a good solid try. And then we started 
the guides started telling people, they said, tell them. And so we started telling it, guide after guide after guide said, you must tell them, you must tell them. Okay, listen, <laughs> you're part of the one comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. Exactly one million souls who came to this biosphere as part of a grand experiment to manifest a divine plan. And your soul contract says, just like, just like, these host live soul contracts say, manifest the divine plan no matter what anyone else does or doesn't do. Clang, clang, ironclad, no getting out of it. And when we told people that, they not only would still not do it, but they would uh, get incredibly angry, say horrifying things to as many people as possible, and, and then still not do it and leave. Yeah, that's true. It's a paradox. You can't tell them, can't not tell them. They still don't do it. Why do you ask? And also, which way is up? Thank you for stepping aside. And now we'll continue with our definition of an actual divine plan. Must be, again, a plan previously defined, a divine plan previously defined, an actual divine plan, meaning based on actual sentiences, not fantasies, in the dimensions in which they're actually experiencing sentience, no dead people, with their actual intentions, leave out the selfish ones, they're not going to do it, actual awarenesses, leave out the ones who can't connect vertically, they aren't going to do it, and actual resources. Why do you ask? And also, which way is up? Now stretch longer, because they're all backing away from that one. It's a hot potato. That's true. Nobody wants to touch it. Stretch longer and pump up the dead children from the deeper, denser dimensions <coughs> who really want <coughs> to get to God and deliver them up onto those tables. I start to see the conference room tables again of all the discussion groups. That's true. Hi friends, did you miss us? Did any of them miss us? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they're irritated that this inconvenient information is once more hitting their tables. That's true. Can't tell them, can't not tell them. What now? In order to manifest an actual divine plan for all dimensions, no matter what anyone else does or doesn't do. And now we're out of time. So we need to wrap it and submit it. There's less fat than yesterday. That's true. Aim straight up the search for truth central axis to the highest presence we can connect with right now who really wants to hear from even higher powers what it is that he or she is supposed to be doing right now. Okay, thank you. Gratitude counts a lot. Gratitude helps to open the pillar. We have noticed that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your interest in what the voice is above you, not your interest in us, your interest in what the voice is above you are saying to do. Thank you. Are you willing to vacuum up the top of our pillar so that we can evacuate even deeper, denser dead children? 